next thing we're going to talk about here a little bit is about some of the strengths and weaknesses in wood. It goes without saying that a wood such as a balsam or poplar or basswood are not going to be as strong as the oaks and stuff. Uh, but at the same time, uh, if I were to put a, a piece of wood here that's quarter sawn, um, in other words, the, the annulars are perpendicular to the face of this, that in itself provides a, a certain weakness uh, that we need to anticipate. Um, this panel here, because it has a climbing cut, it's, it's actually the, the annulars are to actually, you know, they're going back and they're rifting a little bit. And so you actually get to, to a degree some strength out of that aspect of it, along with the beauty. And we've got it small enough that we're, it, it's not going to be eight foot long and the whole thing's going to warp up on us. Yes, the panel will eventually warp a little bit, but because of its size, uh, it's, it's not an issue. Uh, I've got a couple of strips here. This is, this is pine, and, I, and I've got some, uh, let me take a look here and see what this is, red oak here. Now, if you look at the red oak, you're going to see where I've, I've, I've got this quarter sawn. All right, and because of that, you, you see these beautiful uh, rays in here that have no trouble with the eye seeing it, but it would not be a problem for me to take and snap this the length, and the fault would be right on one of those uh, early wood pour sections. So this is not really a wood that we want to spend a lot of time quarter sawing, because of the, the number of applications we'd have. And if we, we made a style out of this and somebody slammed the door shut, uh, chances are our rabbiting on, an, on, an, on a full overlay would just break off the lip. Okay, well, that was our problem for doing that. You know, we shouldn't have done that. Uh, I've got a piece of poplar that's also quarter sawn. Um, I got a piece of pine that's, that's got knots in it with reaction wood. And I got a couple more pieces of, of white pine uh, that, uh, that I've rifted, and though I can get a shot at the camera here and see the rifting. And sometimes when we're, we want to bend wood, instead of trying to take and, and bend a full quarter inch piece, which we, we just can't get much in the way of radius, we can take and, and, and bend several layers, several passes we've cut on the bandsaw and glue them back together. If I were going to cut this or try to, to bend this, you can start seeing that the, the quarter sawing is starting to give us a little bit of a failure rate here. But if I take and I've got both pieces of this pine, same pine, but just cut a different angle, and I can bend them and I can keep going and I can get almost all that way before it breaks. So the, the rifting itself, I'm getting strength out of that. This is poplar, all right. I'm trying to see if I can get a good shot at the end here. All right, we got a slight rifting to the cut. It's still technically quarter sawn, but because of its pores and everything, I can get a pretty good turn on this. Now you're starting to see it give a little bit of a bend, and right about there I get my failure rate. And if you'll notice, it doesn't break clean. It's, it's shattering in different angles and stuff, and again, this comes back to, it's okay when you're getting ready to do any type of forms and you're worried about the wood bending, well cut a strip and break it and see where it breaks on the different acclimations you're cutting on the saw. A clean break is a bad thing. I want this shattered effect. Again, this is a little bit of our CSI, a little bit of our investigation of our wood. This break here, once again, it was, it was not clean. Uh, now, I've got a piece that's a little bit thicker than those, about the same thickness and yeah, just a little bit less than this. But I've got knots in it that have reaction wood. The reaction wood being the tree worked around it and had to deal with the knot. The minute I start to already, the reaction wood, which I can't control the grain acclimation, it becomes the first failure. So as you're going through and you're cutting your wood to do any type of multiple layers, such as the arm of a chair or the back, if you're going to do a multiple layer, like the back frame of a Windsor, if you're going to you know, do a, a glue up on it, you want to make sure product selection, product selection, you got to keep the knots out of it. Now, to that end, uh, even the thicker stuff, they'll use an exhibition where they break a board in half. Um, I have a nice beautiful piece of, of white pine here, it's three quarter inches thick, almost seven eighths inches thick, 
and as I hold it up to the camera, you'll see that it has been plain song. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it over the rough side up. Oops, actually I want to go the other way. I'm, I was correct the way I had it. I want to put it with the, the arc up. And if I just take it and I just, without even thinking about it, hit it, I can break it. But I've never taken a day of Taekwondo or anything. But what I've done is, by knowing my substrate, I have worked the wood against itself. I knew that when I put pressure down, it would cause tension wood on the bottom and begin to separate the fibers. And by hitting it click and clean, quick and clean, I knew it was going to break. Uh, let's take a moment and, and now look at what we've got here. Uh, we can see in this sugar pine here, you can actually see the rays that are working against me. And it broke, let me hold it up to the camera, it broke at a bit of an angle, but if you'll notice, it intersected all of these rays here. I can see all these rays, so that is actually the true, if you want to use the term grain of the wood, that was the grain of the wood. And so by knowing this now, I can see if I was going to put a board up on the side of a tool chest that I wanted to do, that I, would, I, I scored some 14, 16 inch uh, wood. I'm going to need to look at this failure rate and how this is going to be, and I might want to turn it around so that the outside of the tree, when I'm, when I'm getting ready to dovetail it, uh, I'm going to be working to knowing that it's going to want to break in the center. So this might not be where I want to put a whole bunch of pins and tails. I might want to do a nice big thick tail in there to keep from cutting out and making it any weaker than I've done. So it's, uh, you know, it doesn't hurt to snap a couple pieces. I literally, I could have broke this if I just set my weight on it and snapped it. I didn't need to hit it, actually. It was go I was going to have the mechanical advantage on it anyway. So once again, it's, it's our observation, our study of why it failed. It, it's, it's predictable how it's going to fail knowing the structure of the wood. All right. So when we're, you know, if I were to take and glue this back together again, all right, and say I doweled this now, uh, this would actually be, you know, for lack of a better word, stronger than what was actually there. It failed, I struck it in the center, it failed at the weakest point of this wood. So it's only fair that I, I, I give it a little bit of strength instead of just gluing it back together, putting it and doweling it and getting it back together. I don't know how many times I've seen cabinets, fronts, uh, tool chests and stuff where this check has already started in the, it's already started down the face of the cabinet and stuff and I'll see people try to squirt and glue in there and try to squeeze it back together. It's not going to work. The reason it's cracks there is because it's beginning to shrink, it's going to separate. You're going to have to do something to strengthen that joint there between those two pieces of wood to get them to stay back together again. Mm -hmm.